and at the top of her closet she had tax documents from there were some that had a one in front of them 1990 something oh and I was like <laughs> Hi, I'm Paige Killian, and I'm passionate about helping busy moms of littles get organized in three simple steps. So here's today's organization motivation. clients that I have, we talk about that good purge. If any of you guys have watched any of the stuff that I've put out, I talk about the three E's, three E's philosophy, and it's your essentials, enhancements, and extras, and you stick to those different things. Um, and less is more kept coming up for me um, because I really, a lot of times, talk to moms that I go into their homes to organize. We really talk about purging any clutter. And um, sometimes that clutter is awesome stuff you know like it really is like it was expensive um or maybe it was a hand-me-down but you have it in abundance and you're holding on to these things and i just kept coming back to this idea that less is more and what does that mean obviously first thing as a professional organizer i think stuff right i think physical stuff and i think probably all of you understand how that can turn into mental stuff and just like I said, clutter can sometimes take on this title of clutter when it was really awesome stuff when you first got it. Sometimes it's really hard to let go of some of that stuff because we think it might fit one day. We might need it one day. It's a sentimental item, right? I'm not saying anything unheard of because these are all things that we think about. And we're very blessed. I'm so grateful that Amy and others have shared with us this opportunity to give to Harvest Home because a lot of these women, God, when I watched that video that week, that mm -hmm. when, I mean, she's pregnant and she's living in her car and she doesn't have a home. And I think how absolutely blessed are we, not only the homes that we live in, but the stuff that we have in it. And a lot of that stuff is good stuff. Where's, where's Cash? There you are. <laughs> we, okay. Cash has good stuff. <laughs> we are talking about love of Chanel uh, outside. She's got a podcast, which is insanely amazing as well. You guys Aww. listen to that. So, um, and <clears throat> if I'm saying it, so does my friend Kelly Mo back here. Yay. We're going to all talk about podcasts after this. Um, and we were talking about some of the stuff that we love. I, I want to be clear. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a great thing. And I think you can live in a beautiful home that an interior designer has come in and helped you design, right? Like that is good. That is not bad. And if you like nice things, not a problem. Where it can sort of get into that tricky moment is when we start bringing in all the stuff that either isn't serving us or that might get that clutter title because it's, <clears throat> it's kind of in the way. And that could potentially keep us from seeing some blessings. Because I don't know about you, but there's this place on my counter. <laughs> pause for everyone thinking about the place on the counter um, that collects the stuff, right? Because you have lots of bodies in your house that come in. They, that's the drop zone. Does anybody have a drop zone? Mm -hmm. Like where you okay, normal. And that's okay. Again, not bad. Mm -hmm. But how long do we allow the stuff to stay in the drop zone, which sometimes is on the floor. We were laughing about how you have a sweet one who likes to throw his laundry beside the laundry oh. basket. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> lot of sweet treasures things that brought her joy so uh, one of the things that she loved doing is doing puzzles and my kids got to do I have pictures and pictures of her wearing this necklace and doing <clears throat> oh sorry grandmommy just a little there we go um, <laughs> of her doing puzzles with my kids and so I took photos of her with the kids some of them doing puzzles with the kids and I had them printed on puzzles and mailed them to her and what I didn't know is that she did all of those puzzles and then she framed them Aww. and then she hung the puzzles Aww. so um that was so sweet and that brought her joy in her refrigerator and the back of her pantry door were covered in her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren's um these sweet moments of like newspaper articles and things that we had done and photos together and so that was like it was this moment of like when we got back together and Kelly was like, actually, the person who was supposed to speak today cannot do that. Can you, would you like switch places with her so she can do the later in the springtime? 
And I was like, that is so crazy because I stayed up late night, three, four o'clock in the morning. And this came out because it felt like that's what I was supposed to be talking about. And I was like, how do I turn this into spring cleaning? Ah, like, yeah, let's try to yeah. find a connection. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so anyway, when all of the grandmommy stuff happened to you, it was sort of like, okay, this makes sense. Like less is more, like really hold on to the super important things. And then as we all were leaving, we took little things, but we didn't <laughs> want her stuff, her wonderful, beautiful stuff that was important to her. We don't want to just pack it all up and bring it to our homes because then even though it was so great, it could turn into clutter at our house. That's not honoring her or her memory, right? Because then it turns into clutter because we don't have a space for it. It didn't mean <coughs> the same things to us that it did to her, right? So it was super important that we honored what it was that she loved and we sat together and we took pictures of it and we cried our heads off. Oh my gosh, the tears, I can't with the headache. Um, and it's still, you know, it's very on the surface. I'm sure you can hear it's still very on the surface, but I was so grateful that she chose to not have so much stuff that it became a burden to people after her. So that's where this whole thing comes in. Um, <laughs> I joke, you guys know the verse, um, for God so loved the world that he asked us to organize it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 you thought you knew. It's like, it's in the newer version. It's like, <laughs> 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 You know, I have that one. I'll give it to you. I'll get it to you. I think it's in the five minute devotional. He doesn't want us um, really putting so much price and emphasis on the stuff. I know when I had the girls come over not that long ago, I was like, new house, got it during COVID. Really wanted to have rugs in every room. Why do I not have the rugs in yet? Was sort of going through thinking like all the things but I wanted to be a little different in my home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Felt like got some fake plants. Maybe I should have hit Trader Joe's, done some orchids before they got there. You know, I did have one orchid from Chrissy. Thank you, Chrissy. Um, so, well, let's just tell. They know how OCD, sleeping with the enemy, kind of. I can be, right? Right? And. When you look at my pantry, every label is facing out properly. Uh -huh. All the towels are hanging properly. <laughs> Heather's dying. She can envision it. Um, and so these stinkers over here, please look at them. And look at us. Weeks after they left, I still would open another cabinet and they would have like tipped things <laughs> Sit down that night, ready to watch something on TV. And somebody's tipped my my fake plant. <laughs> Thankfully, it wasn't real. Over, and I jump on the text chain, and I'm like, "Eat it!" And then Kristen's like, "That one was me. <laughs> I did that one. I did that one. Hope you laughed. I did. I did. And then I fixed it. Fast. And then I fixed it. And then I fixed it. Fast. You know, love, love doing the Netflix thing, going through, watching my shows. Really appreciate all of the great entertainment that's out there. And the problem is that it can absolutely get in the way of my relationship with God. It can absolutely take over and I can be like, yeah, but I just want to watch one more episode instead of do my Bible study homework or pull out my Bible or even message somebody that might need a message that it might need a text or might need a call and have that time. That is something that really got to me because I thought, while maybe I have sort of the stuff under control, I sometimes can have that, which really honestly cannot just take the form of clutter with this stuff, but that can take the form of an idol. I am worshiping, in a way, these shows. I am wanting to watch these shows and do that instead <laughs> of spend time with God, instead of fellowshipping with other women and talking about things that are going on in our life. So that was something I was like, okay, Jeremy, it just got really real. Thanks so much. <laughs> I thought we were friends. Why do you have to call me out like that? <laughs> that was something for me that was really stuck with me. And then I, uh, I started thinking like, for me, that, that kind of does parlay into the stuff as well. 
And when I took note of that, it sort of opened up my eyes to different things in my own home. And I know that a lot of my clients feel this way too, where we do feel like we're actually pretty organized in some areas. Uh, and I think that we sort of have those little hidden spots. Um, when Jenny and I were talking about like a little area and I was like, you know, it's holiday season is upon us and I'm about to have to get out the holiday decor. And it's that triangular weird shaped closet under the stairs for me that I'm just like, oh, stuff's back there. And, uh, or she was talking about like the drawer, like the drawer they or like the cabinet, you know? And I just felt like when I was thinking about this stuff, I just, I just felt like, you know, I'm going to actually go through my house with a fine tooth comb and I'm going to look and I, I read a little list and I thought, <clears throat> do we need 100 stuffed animals? Right. Right. Um, mm. What about <laughs> 20 spatulas or 300 old DVDs? I'm reading. 300 old DVDs. No one is watching anymore. <laughs> Boxes of T-shirts we wore in high school and college. Mm. Gigantic trophies from the 90s. <laughs> 90s. Plastic bins filled with electrical cords. We aren't sure even belong to things currently <laughs> in our home. That's real, right? A closet full of clothes we aren't wearing. I'm not. Clarification, I'm not talking about the clothes we are wearing. Let's keep those because those are great and they bring us joy, right? Marie Kondo type Marie sparking Kondo. joy. It's the clothes we aren't wearing. And I think a lot of us maybe had a rude awakening when COVID hit because we were like, <laughs> we're pretty much just wearing clothes that double as nap time attire, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, exactly. It definitely put things into perspective for me. <clears throat> she said silver linings of COVID. <laughs> um, how about baby toys our kids have outgrown? Again, I'm not saying get rid of baby toys. I'm saying the ones that the kids have outgrown, why are we still hanging on to those? Is it because we maybe we don't know where to donate it? I've got some places. If you need to know, we'll talk after. Is it because you haven't maybe made a connection with somebody in your kid's class to say, we're done with this. I know your child has a younger sibling. Would you be interested, you know? And we know that like kids go through stuff so fast, it's usually still looks good as new, right? Whenever we're handing it off. Except for the onesies, those just need to be thrown away. Yeah. <laughs> what all of the things? And boy shoes. And boy, boy shoes. shoes. Yeah. They all have holes in them. Yes. Yeah. No, or like shoes. my son likes to do now <laughs> so. is get rid I'm like, can we save that creativity for paper? Because he just <laughs> wants to draw on a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> just lean in. Just artistic interpretation. Um, okay, how about tax documents from two decades oh, ago? Oh, yes. Say yeah. that. Say that. <laughs> I just went back Are over the summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went back over the summer, and Mom and I went through her closet, and at the top of her closet, she had tax documents from, there were some that had a one in front of them, 1990-something. Oh, and I was like, <laughs> we could do better. And she was like, honestly, Paige, I don't even know what's it's like spider webs and you know dust up there. Like I don't even know. We don't need that. That had to be purged. Um, okay, how about this one's real? Twenty-five water bottles in our cabinet. Do we need that many water bottles? If you're using them, yes. If you're using them, absolutely. Are there 15 of you living in the house? I don't know if you have to <laughs> water bottles, um, but that's real. I see that one a lot. Yeah. It's okay. No yeah, judgment. No, just like, water. this is what we're going to work on today. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's okay. Um, and then how about like too many mismatched plastic cups or shot glasses? I have a friend every time she went somewhere, you guys, she's, she's not a drinker. <laughs> And every time she went to a new place, she would get a cute little, like probably at the airport. You know what I mean? Cute. And I was like, unless you're like living your best college life. We, uh, we don't need that many. Have a couple. Have a couple of your favorites. Um, okay, so are we filling our space with so much that it becomes clutter and it's blocking us from seeing beautiful blessings and even opportunities around us. I know I can get really stressed out and I will start to say no to more opportunities that come out or, or that come up that are available to me if I feel like my house isn't in order. If I feel like I'm sort of, my schedule is drowning in stuff. That can be like mental clutter as well, right? We can take on too many things or we can just straight be binge watching Netflix for way too long to stop and pause and say, how do I, decide that I'm going to volunteer for something. How do I start putting 
you know, the planning and practice and actually make this happen. So the physical clutter and the mental clutter can actually have us missing blessings and opportunities. And I don't want that for me. I don't want that for you. And I know the beautiful moms that I work with a lot of times and, and a few good men, <laughs> um, since I'm organizing for some very sweet, like family members of mine. Um, I feel like when we're done, we can breathe. All right, so my best friend Tiffany, um, she and I were talking when her big mama passed away. We were talking about this over the summer when grandmommy was still with me. And she said, you know, her big mama is like my grandmommy. And when, when she passed away, she said something happened. I really started rethinking how my children see me. And just, you know, just like the stuff it didn't feel as important as it was before. You know, it was that perspective, loss of a loved one who was so impactful in my life. I feel like I need to be thinking about really what my kids are seeing, what I'm prioritizing, what I'm doing. And so that when grandmommy passed, that became really real for me. She was right. It was like something shifted. And I, I really do think that I tried to see that when she told me at the time but I really felt it whenever grandmommy passed. And I think that we all, on some level, that is our priority. We want to make sure we're a good example for our kids and we want to make sure we're putting the emphasis on the important things in life. And it's just not stuff. And, and I say all the time to my kids, uh, when birthdays come around or the holidays, I say, let's talk about experiences versus toys, clothes let's talk about what can we do together as a family or what can we do to focus on something that you really love. My daughter's super artistic, so um, getting into art classes or she's gonna be taking guitar lessons with Mr. Wong, if you guys know, we love him. Um, she wanted to do that. That was something she and her dad started doing together, which was really sweet. And I was like, let's get you in. We love Mr. Wong, like let's, let's get you in and do that. That is an experience that she's gonna be able to take with her forever, bless your heart. And a stuffed animal just isn't going to do the same thing, you know? The purge was really hard for some people because, like I said, sentimental. And um, I did this five-day ugly bedroom challenge whenever I got back right after. It was like the next day, like after being with grandmommy, the family, all of that when she passed. Friday night I got in. Monday morning I had to be like bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and talk about organizing. And while I love it, I was kind of like, hmm, this is hard. Mm -hmm. Cried my eyes out. And I was like, okay, game on. We're going to talk about this because it is important. And I pulled from that experience of not wanting to leave behind all the stuff for her kids and her grandkids and great grandkids to have to sort through. And we each took these little things and I talked about in that ugly bedroom challenge because she was like, help me with the purge. Like, I feel like I have so many things in my bedroom, whether they belong in there or not. And I really struggle with the purge. And I said, listen, I am at the height of feeling really wanting to be glued to anything that smells like her or, mm -hmm. you know, reminds me of her. Like I said, this is my uh, good old Stella and Dot necklace back in the day when I was selling it and grandmommy had this and I have like a hundred pictures of her wearing this. And I just feel like if there was a fire, it's like costume or Cartier. Like I'm grabbing this costume jewelry that is like so meaningful to me. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's one, of those, um, one of those things that I, I'm so grateful that she decided to not leave so much behind. And when it was time for us to purge her stuff, we had that moment where, you know, like you see the Marie Kondo where she like goes in and she sits so beautifully with great posture. I don't have that. And she like <laughs> does the thing with her hands. And then all the, the people around her, they're sort of like, oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and then whenever she emerges and she's like, okay, they're like, okay. <laughs> and the idea is that she's basically sort of in a way like communicating with this home and saying like thank you for serving me in the way and like let's get rid of anything that's not a blessing in this house so again that just you know kept coming up for me and I just realized now it was because 
we were going to have to let go of a lot of stuff of grandmommy's because she would not have wanted that to come into our home and stay there and turn into clutter and not be appreciated. So I grabbed a robe that I had made for her. You guys know I don't do color, but I'm wearing pink socks for grandmommy <laughs> because she loved pink. And it's not really her color pink, but that's all, I, like mm -hmm. that's the best I could do. Um, I got the necklace, but she loved pink. And so I had this robe made for her with her name on it. And so I was like, I need the robe, I need the makeup bag, I need the slippers that I got, like the set, and then I need the necklace. So I just wanna encourage you that if you are gonna try and tackle that purge and the sentimental items, are the struggle, or maybe once upon a time they were sentimental and now you look back on them and you're like, oh, that's so cute, that's so sweet, love that. I'm gonna give it to somebody else who can use it now. Mm -hmm. Or it might even be time to toss it. And don't feel guilty about that. I think I think the guilt can sometimes be a thing, right? Mm -hmm. Eggplant dip, it is so divine. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna have to go ask Kim Kardashian at K Bakery if she can start making it, because I don't have a, <laughs> I don't need this food processor. For every four years, I decide to make that dip. That's all I was thinking of. I let the food processor go. And I feel good about it. Yes. So do, I just, again, I think so often we might think like stuff is, we paid money for it or we got it as a wedding present and we don't want to let things go. But if it's not serving you, that is maybe not what needs to happen. Hey, thanks for watching this video. For more resources to organize and style your busy life in three simple steps, head over to everythingwithstyle.com and connect with me on Instagram at everythingwithstylemom. Don't forget to check out the Mom's Organization Motivation Podcast over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, any of your favorite platforms. And if you loved this video, it would make me so happy if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. Thanks so much for watching and happy organizing.